Hello, Swivel Heads. It's Greg Allison with Green Greg's bringing you breaking news. Israel has struck at Iran. Apparently, at their nuclear facilities or thereabouts, at least. And Iran has fired missiles back. The war is on. Now, the significance of where Israel struck is highly important. It's been said that the missiles hit around uh, Isfahan, I don't know how to pronounce that, I-S-F-A-H-A-N, no, excuse me, I-S-F-A-H-A-N, Isfahan. Uh, what you need to know is that that is where the largest nuclear research complex of Iran is located, Isfahan Nuclear Technology Center. NTC is located there. Yes, this this the the INTC is a multi-purpose research center suspected of potentially being involved in covert Iranian nuclear weapons program. It houses various facilities, including a small research nuclear reactor supplied by China, a uranium conversion facility that converts yellow cake into uranium hexafluoride, a key step in the enrichment process, a zirconium production plant that uh, produces materials for nuclear reactors and a fuel plate fabrication plant. And God knows what all else. So by if they have indeed struck this plant, which is what Israel has been wanting to do for a very long time, then it could release a lot of radioactive materials in the area. And Israel has uh, pledged to strike back in kind because Israel wants to hit, excuse me, Iran wants to strike back. Iran has been wanting to hit the uh, Shimon Perez Negev Nuclear Research Center and the Negev Nuclear, uh, uh, it's in the, uh, re the desert there. They got a reactor called the Demona Reactor. Of course, that would also release a lot of radiation. So even if nuclear devices aren't used, there may be nuclear effects. So in es essence, it might be like a dirty bomb, but worse because nuclear power plants can unleash vast amounts of radiation. Radiation. So this is in essence, perhaps already a nuclear war. I don't know, guys. Uh, we all have to see the fog of war is still tense. Not a lot is being said in those regards. Uh, we will see more. I will share some articles. I'm going to update to see who's in my chat room because it's on. As you know, Iran had vowed, they had vowed to take out Israel, to wipe out Israel if Israel did the slightest thing. This is definitely, definitely in that area. I see Colonel Cole, Rainbow Food Rocks in the house here. Uh, so, guys, this is, uh, this is uh, great. Uh, oil prices have already shot up. I understand up toward $85 a barrel. It may go up more. No signs of the straight horn moves being closed yet. I uh, and I did a video. I posted just earlier today that why I think Iran is not likely to close the straight horn moves, but it's war. Who knows, guys? It's war. So uh, in any case, there will be issues with war. Yes, Colonel Cole says the game is on. It's on. Uh, and here's the other part. We had a lot of EAMs yesterday. I mean, intense. Now, I think they might have been a little bit more tense right prior to the first Iranian strike on Israel. Now, the other thing is that, uh, so that really kind of showed our hand that something was going down, but it showed a little bit more hand than that because I'll show you in articles in a little bit. There was uh, this claim that the United States and Israel had reached an agreement and Israel wasn't going to strike uh, Iran, or at least in a major way, uh, so that uh, the, they would get a green light from uh, uh, Joe Biden's administration to strike Rafa. And I mentioned last night, that could be, you know, like six-dimensional chess. That could have been a totally a psyop, a deceptive practice, because in war you got to do deception. So I mean, oh, we're not going to hit them. But at the same time, all those EAMs kind of played our hands. So on one hand, we were saying we're not going to do anything. And even the Israelis come out and says, well, we might not attack until after the Passover, which is the end of this month. So they went ahead and did it. Well, you need the element of surprise if you're going to attack. But it's hard to do an element of surprise when you're doing so many EAMs. They were intense, very intense. 
And uh, actually a voice in one of the EAMs when asked if this was real, the speaker broke protocol and said it's real. That did not necessarily mean that we were going to have a war, but it meant that positioning was taking place. So uh, it also means another thing. Because the United States was sending out all the EAMs, and because of this deceptive action, we're in with it. We're in part of it in some way. Now, maybe the United States won't attack. Maybe Joe Biden is trying to claim, uh, well, the Israelis just went and did it. They did it without us. They just did what they wanted to do and tried to deny it so he won't lose the vote of Michigan because he's worried about his re-election. Or maybe he's just decided to declare martial law so they won't have to worry about a pesky election. I don't know, guys. I have no idea what's going to happen in that regard. But in any event, war's on. It is a war. Uh, I hate to, to be the one to bring the bad news to you. It's making some uh, news channels and others it's not making. The news services on my phone don't carry it. Even Al Jazeera hasn't picked it up yet. I, uh, I understand Press uh, IR, uh, the official news agency of Iran, had had something on it. But when I went to their website, there was nothing on their website about it, which is really strange. So I am going to show you guys, and I will also go back over what these facilities are in a little bit. I will repeat that. But first, we're going to go through some articles to see what's cooking out there so you guys can get a sense of what is going down here. I got to make sure I get all the right stuff open. Give me a second. And I will do a share screen. Bing, 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 bing. And uh, I want to go to this thing, I think. There we go. We hit the right spot. Oh, yeah, Syria. Syria is also under attack. Syria, there's been reports of explosions in Iraq. I don't know why Iraq, maybe they're hitting proxies in Iraq. So um, here we go, guys. Explosions heard in southern Syria, Iran. IRG, IRGC, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard troops, evacuated from Syria. Well, no, they were already evacuating. And uh, so there were targets also apparently hitting Rafa. So maybe they hit a Rafa too. So uh, they took a Rafa and more. Anyway, alleged Israeli strikes hit uh, reported in Iran, Syria, and Iraq. And supposedly it was a Syrian army base, uh, as Soyada, I don't know how you pronounce that, and the Daira governance in southern Syria. Now, I don't know where this picture here comes from. That might be Syria. It might be in Iran. You just see a big explosion and a minaret next to a mosque. So, uh, yeah, ABC News has been reporting this, so has been uh, other sources. Why is this? Don't get the full article when you click on the article. Uh, objects seen in, uh, in skies above Jerusalem. That was the 14th. Okay. Um, let's go back and look at CNN. Yeah, so some of the stuff will be breaking. Some of it will still be coming out. They're baiting Iran to nuke so they can nuke them. I don't know the watchman. They've, uh, nuclear plants may already be under attack. So we will see. Iran may have nukes already. Israel, we understand, has between 100 and 400. Nobody knows exactly what they got. The sources vary considerably, and uh, Israel is not admitted to any of it. I will go to uh, Google Earth a little bit and show you the site that they hit or, or the city where the site's at. So explosions near the Iranian city of Isfahan, how do you say that? Again, I tell you, that's where Iran's major main nuclear research center is at. This is what the Israelis have been wanting to strike for years. They've been looking for the excuse, and now they've done it. How did they do it? Is it just missiles? That's what's alleged. They had always wanted to take in their uh, aircraft to do it. They wanted uh, refueling aircraft from America. Did they get refueling air, uh, refueling operations set up? Uh, apparently, it's just missiles now. Aircraft may follow. Uh, you wouldn't want to send an aircraft probably until you take out some of the air defense systems in Israel, I mean, in Iran. Uh, we don't expect aircraft to become from Iran to Israel because the Isra uh, Iranian Air Force is uh, nothing to brag about. But they have one heck of a missile force. So uh, this is telling us the same kind of stuff here. Uh, 
this is from, uh, let's see, the Daily Mail says uh, explosions heard in rock hostile state, it says here. I think they're all hostile right now. Um, official told ABC News that strikes hit the Iran. Have it's unclear what target. Hey, I think we know more than that. This article is not so good. All right, when I last come in here to Al Jazeera, it had nothing about it. Three minutes ago, they're reporting on New York police. Really? This is Al Jazeera's best. The, the, the war is on in the Mideast, and their latest is about New York police. Let me hit an update here, see if it has anything new. Oh, Iran, Iran activates air defenses over several cities. Okay, now it's updated. Reports of Israeli missile strikes on site in Iran. There's the police article. So this is what we're saying here. Whoa. U.S. TV network. So Al Jazeera is sort of uh, <laughs> quoting ABC News. Come on, Al Jazeera. You can't beat that. You should have people on the ground more than anybody. Wow. I thought they were the Fox and CNN of the Mideast. All right, here on X, we see uh, breaking Israeli strikes. Uh, yeah, nothing more here. It's just showing a picture of Netanyahu. Some other discussions here. Here's some videos that uh, you can see explosions in. Uh, first video clearly showed moment of direct impacts uh, from strikes on Isfahan. Some people said it was near the airport. You can see an explosion in the background. We got no idea what hit. Ran strikes Israel. Biden's to Israel don't. Well, they did. Now, this is what I find interesting right here. Um, I don't know how current this is, how good this data is. Uh, it shows a big spike in oil prices from $82 a barrel to $85 a barrel, roughly. And it might go up more. Uh, it may be, they may be watching to see what happens with the straight. So, guys, just pay attention. I'm not going to spend all night here just going over the same stuff over and over. Uh, so Iran launches missiles that hit the dead. Let's see. Oh, we'll come back. Is that the top of this? I guess it is. Iran launches missiles that hit the desert. And is, Israel retaliates by striking uh, Iran's 50-year-old Tomcat. So maybe they took out the Tomcats and, uh, that uh, they had there in Iran. Um and this is from 52 minutes ago. Iran launches 300 missiles and drones in Israel. Is this from the last news from the 14th or is this today's news? I don't know. That looks like some video I saw, pictures I saw earlier. That's from the 14th below. So there's not still there's still not a lot of news out there on this. As I mentioned earlier, there was this claim U.S. approves Rafa off in exchange for no Israel counter strikes on Iran. And there's another report I had seen. I showed you guys the stuff last night. There's another report I had seen, which claimed there would be no, no uh, strikes until after Passover, which would be the 30th of this month. Well, we see that all might have just been part of the deception, just like the Russians. Oh, uh, yeah, we're not going in. This was a drill. And, oh, by the way, we're going home now. We're pulling our troops back just before they hit Ukraine. I mean, that's the kind of thing you would hear and see. So when people are pulling back and saying nothing's going to happen, it's like, you know, when you work for a company and you know things aren't good and suddenly all the management's telling you everything's great and hunky-dory, don't worry. That's when you worry. The layoffs are about to start, right? Uh, anyway, this is what Iran had said earlier. The president of Iran had said this. Nothing would remain. This is what Iran's president vowed completely. They vowed to completely destroy Israel if it launches the tiniest invasion. Now, this is not exactly an invasion, and Israel couldn't exactly invade Iran. But like I said, this could have been lost in the translation. I uh, think probably what's going on might might pertain. So even if Israel only made a limited strike on, uh, it sounds like, a, the nuclear facilities, wherever they hit, then uh, it could be a case that... Um, uh, that this will escalate. You know, maybe it was a limited strike hitting just the nuclear facilities. But I don't think so because they hit in Assyria. They're probably hitting in the Lebanon. That's most likely. So uh, just pay attention here, guys. Because earlier, and I showed you this article earlier, 
uh, the ministers of Netanyahu had urged him to hit the sensitive facilities in Iran as soon as possible. Well, they did that. He listened to his ministers. So, yeah, this is there's not a lot of news out there on this yet because it's just been going down within the last hour. But reports are that Israel has struck. They uh, hit into Iran with missiles. They hit that facility that I just mentioned, the uh, Ishvahan. Well, we know they hit near Ishvahan. Ishvahan has the Ishvahan Nuclear Technology Center, the INTC. Now, it's not been confirmed that they hit that center in reports I've seen. Some people say they hit it, but there's not a really a confirmation of that. There's a lot of hearsay going on right now, but that is what that city is all about. It does have nuclear facilities there. In fact, the Ishvahan Nuclear Technology Center is Iran's largest nuclear research complex. And once again, uh, just to bring you up to it, it is a small, supposedly, no, it's a multi-purpose, no, it's not small, it's a multi-purpose research center suspected of potentially being involved in a covert Iranian nuclear weapon program. And it houses various facilities, and those include a small research reactor supplied by China, a uranium conversion facility that converts yellow cake into uranium hexafluoride, a key step in the enrichment process, a zirconium production plant. You use zirconium alloys, zircaloy, to coat your fuel rods and are used for other purposes in nuclear weapons and uh, nuclear power plants. And the zirconium power plant. Uh, produces materials for nuclear reactors, is what they say here, and a fuel plate fabrication plant. So if they've hit this plant, it could release a lot of radioactive materials within Iran, and you bet Iran would be, in that case, targeting Israel's nuclear facility, their nuclear research plant, which is the Shimon Perez Negev Nuclear Research Facility. It's also known as the, uh, unofficially, as the Demona Reactor. That's how you probably hear it referred to most often as the Demona Reactor. We don't know too much about that because the uh, Iran, excuse me, Israel claims they don't have nuclear weapons. <laughs> so they keep that kind of quiet. All right, so what I want to do is I'm going to stop this share that we got open here. I got to expand this to do it. Oh, where's my expansion thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't knock myself off here. I got an issue with my Zoom. I'm going to stop share here. Hello. <laughs> We're going to go look at Google Earth. I'm going to show you where this is at, where the action is. So hang on, guys. This is it. Ish Bahan. This is the city. They claim there were some explosions near the airport. This is the airport right here. That's an interesting looking complex for an airport. What is that? Got no idea what that is. And most of the, we know most of their stuff, their nuclear facility stuff is buried deep. It would take some heavy deep hitting strikes to hit that. So the people in the city are watching stuff out toward the airport. So back off here a little bit. So we'll give you an idea of where in Iran this is. Let's back out a little bit further. This is out of reach of uh, Israeli fighter jets unless the Iranian fighter jets have gotten refueled. Uh, but what we know right now is missile strikes, not fighter jets. But if the fighter jets come into play, it means they've been refueled. Also, I've seen articles that claim that uh, that the United Arab Emirates and uh, Saudi Arabia had denied U.S. overflights during defensive operations on the April 14th attacks where Iran struck Israel. However, or Saudi Arabia did take out some of those missiles themselves. They just didn't want, you know, they don't want to deal with the blowback from their population of uh, United States forces going over or, uh, Saudi Arabia. But uh, Jordan also took out some. I imagine it could cross over Jordan and Iraq. 
So this would be the pathway they would take most likely if they were going in. Or they're hitting serious. So who knows? They might even fly over part of that. But I would expect to get a lot of flat there. So I'm expecting them to come in over Jordan. Uh, U.S. forces might come up from uh, down here. We've got the Pets for Force Wall, whatever it's called, aircraft carrier down here. The Eisenhower is somewhere in this area down here. So, guys, no matter if this was a limited strike, only by saying limited on Ishfahan. That's a major strike. The Iranians have already retaliated. So you can expect Israeli retaliations, Iranian retaliations. I don't see any end to it now. Yeah, please no profanity in chat. We do keep a clean channel here. We are a family channel. We don't uh, engage in profanity. It's not allowed in my chat room. I believe in freedom of speech. You can express your opinions, whether we agree with them or not. Uh, but do be respectful of people in the chat and no profanity. That's my rule. My mods will, will eliminate your comment. If you keep going, they'll time you out. And if you just can't help yourself, you will be banned from the channel. Because we are a family channel. I do believe in freedom of speech, but be respectful, folks. And just remember, we are a family channel. So, um, I will go through the news again. I want to check the chat room here just real quick and see what folks are saying. And we'll get back in the news here. Hey, we got Rex here. Rex in the house. Wow. Rex is in the house, folks. If you're still with us. Colonel Cole is in the house. All the crap we were looking for in 20, 20, uh, 2003. Hmm. Rainbow Foods, is, Rocks is in the house. I've had her on my channel. Cowboy Roy Rogers, my VP of Operations and the Freedom Restoration Foundation is in the house. They get missile alerts from Israel for the past few hours. Well, they're it's real now. It's real now. <laughs> David Potter, good thing I ain't your president. Ricketts, hello. Vidcom, how are you doing? Chill act, thank you, Greg. We need you to keep up the exit reporting. Uh, David, I just uh, put out everything we can actually see, everything that we know that's to be true. Mad Magazine, 1986 article, the Reagan. Are we headed toward another Mideast war? the Reagan hit the shore. Oh my gosh. Uh, see our user. Saw you were live. I'm already down for the night. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Is the emergency action message that uh, our uh, that sent out to our nuclear forces from our nuclear command centers. Now they they always send the AEMs out, and sometimes it's more intense than others. They've been particularly intense lately. They were also intense before, just before uh, Iran struck at Israel. I figured something was going down. Uh, the last time those EAMs were intense for about two days ahead of time. This time it was mostly one day ahead of time. So uh, I was hoping we had another day or two, but it's happening. It's on ABC. Uh, hit nine sites in Iran, according to Anton then we're definitely game on, guys. We're definitely game on. Israel hitting back. Yes, Israel's hitting back, and Iran's hitting back on Israel already. Iran had promised that their response would be immediate, and they promised basically to obliterate Israel. They claimed that what they shot at Israel last time was only about a tenth of what they had. Uh, you know, there'll be some intercepts, but they can really shoot 10 times more missiles. And that's an if. We know they got oodles and oodles and oodles of missiles. The question is, how many launchers do they have? Uh, how fast can they fire them? And they just keep on firing them. That might be what they do. Eventually, they could over potentially oversaturate the, uh, you know, uh, Iran has three tiers of missile defense, principally. They have the arrow. They have, which is the most powerful missile defense they have, which will reach out the farthest and take out the big long-range uh, uh, ballistic missiles, 
continental, you know, inter, inter, intermediate, intermediate range, we call them, ballistic missiles. That's what you'd shoot from there. Not intercontinental. We're not firing between continents, like between North America and Asia, you know, for Russia or, or, or you know, China. But these are very capable missiles. Iran, Iran has shown they can strike at distances anywhere they want to in Israel with pinpoint accuracy. And uh, so David Slingshot would be the one reaching out the farthest. No, I mean, the arrow system. The next level is the David Slingshot. And then the Iron Dome is the one closest to home. But they also have some Patriot missile uh, batteries there, too, in Iran, which is not part of one of those tiers. But they probably approximate somewhere between. They're probably beyond the Iron Dome. They're probably more like David Slingshot. Uh, we do and have activated in the last uh, attack our standard missile three from the U.S. Navy, which is uh, part of the Aegis system. They're often called Aegis missiles, but there's several missiles that the Aegis system can fire, like that, like the SM6, which is probably more like David Slingshot, but the SM3 uh, missile is an intercontinental ballistic missile interceptor. That one is a very powerful missile. It's a very expensive missile. Apparently, some of those have already seen combat duty and are likely to, again, as Iran seems to be counterattacking. We don't yet know the extent of the Iranian counterattack. Uh, we did hear that uh, Russia had uh, activated their uh, nuclear doomsday plane. Apparently, it's in the air. So everybody is on alert. All the tensions are high. Let's hope this don't escalate for now between Iran and uh, Israel. But there's a lot of countries involved in defending Iran, and Iran's going to look and see that we were part of the deception, that nothing's going to happen, and then we sent out all those EAMs. So they're going to know that we're part of this, and uh, they're likely to strike back in some fashion against us. And the biggest thing that we got to worry about here is the sleeper cells being activated in the United States. I don't think they'll activate. I could be wrong. But I don't think they will activate the sleeper cells until they see such a threshold in which they think their their regime is actually under direct threat. If they think their regime is a threat to fall or being taken out, it's it's a possibility that they will activate their sleeper cells here in the United States, and that would be utter mayhem. Utter mayhem. I highly encourage you guys to get your gas tanks full before the, the, the price spike shows up at the pump if it hasn't already. It's amazing how they can raise the price of oil way out at the facilities and it pops up at gas tanks so fast at the gas stations. So you might want to get your fuel while you can get it. Maybe this afternoon would be a good time tonight to run out and top your tanks off. Go to the grocery stores before all the toilet paper preppers figure out what's going on. <laughs> Once the toilet paper preppers figure it out, forget about it. You won't get in the grocery stores and the shelves are liable to be clean. Anton, there's also good people amongst the Palestinians. Most, yeah, pray for everybody. Pray for everyone. Because I've often told you on this channel that there's good and there's good people. There's good and bad people everywhere. But there's good people in every country, from every race, creed, color, of every religion, every background, in every city, county, state, country, shire, whatever you want to call it, Providence. And... Uh, Primarily, we, we all get played against each other by our leaders. And in organizations, the sociopaths and psychopaths tend to bubble up to the top more than anywhere else. And I think you've got to be a little bit sociopathic or psychopathic to run countries in a manner that some of these do, especially when they're totalitarian states. Talib uh, railed and wailed about the anti-Israeli protesters getting arrested at universities. Hmm. Yeah, something when they're, they're in, here in the United States chanting death to America? Jeez. It's not a senator, uh, the watchman. That's Marocus. He's the head of the Department of Homeland Insecurity. That's how I refer to it as long as he's the head of it. Yeah, the Senate just, uh, yeah, it's all right. But of course, you re realize that the Senate's controlled by the Democrats. And uh, uh, they're, they're seem to be converting these people coming across to voting for uh, Taterhead, President Taterhead. So sent it to my other email. Okay. Uh, F-35s versus F-14s. Uh, yeah. No, uh, those old Tomcats that uh, Iran has are very old. 
very, very, very old, not maintained. They couldn't get spare parts for them. They've had a cobble of what they could together. Uh, their aircraft fleet is in bad shape. Hey, Sasquatch Moon, good to see you. I found GG due to growing garden. He's a valuable resource for Intel and this and more. Well, thank you, CR user. Yeah, this is, uh, I've been telling you guys to get your stuff to grow your garden for a long time. And uh, geez, yeah, that's about the right reaction. Geez. Uh, Kathleen, oh, Nick, Greg, check your blue ranches. Uh, who needs a blue ranch? Is some blue ranch doing something they shouldn't be doing? X Dragon, six nine said good uh, greetings to you. David Potter, that may be true. Some people think that's the United States, but uh, yeah, we know where Babylon's located. That's uh, that's in Iraq, though, not around. I don't know, guys. That's right. The watchman caught it. He said it's in Iraq, right? But some people think that Babylon refers to the United States now, uh, New York City, because of the prophecies about how the people won't cry and well, it's a city of big trade by the sea. And actually, Babylon's not by the sea, it's by a river. North Alabama hiking, hello to you. Kathleen, yeah, what will tomorrow bring? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit. Even some of the actions of the leadership and military of Israel are unrighteous. That's true. I think the way that, look, the country was founded by the Rothschild family, basically. You know, if you read the, if you go back and look at the Balfour Agreement, uh, the, the Rothschilds were behind that. So, uh, Joseph uh, Hendrickson, I believe New York City is in New Babylon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what a lot of, that's what a lot of people think. I don't know, guys. You see a lot of different uh, cases made for different places. But that is definitely what a lot of people think. Cheers from Scranton, Pennsylvania, George Coggin. Linda Shooter, Israel launched an attack on Iran. Leader's birthday. Oh, is it Khomeini's birthday? Well, happy birthday, Khomeini. You got some uh, candles to blow out, it looks like. Jeez. Uh, la, 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 la. This is... Whoop. Well, where'd that go? I hate it when I'm trying to go through and it jumps on me. Somebody had talked about U.S. refueling planes. And then sometimes when I'm scrolling in the chat room, it jumps a bunch. Has anybody heard anything about it? Uh, U.S. being part of the refueling? People, not the government. Boycott, that's my point. I think really all governments are evil, unfortunately. They just uh, get corrupted. Grow taters, says the watchman. It's not a bad mood to grow taters. Oh, la, 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 la. This thing is trying to do stuff here. Grow all you can. Extra. Guys, I've been telling you guys, you better be growing a garden. Kathleen, I have. Oh, my head when it jumps like that. I'm trying to read a comment. I scroll a little bit, and it just, poof. I totally lose track where I was at. Or is it that simple Victorian time traveler? You're right. Or is not that simple. Uh, he needs to begin voting to elect members of the 18th local sub with 989 million people eligible to vote. Largest in election history. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, we're getting more people elected in more places this year than anybody. Alabama Heartbreaker, how you doing? You breaking hearts here in Alabama, Alabama Heartbreaker? <laughs> So, Rex, you still in the house, buddy? Cloud 99. You're beyond cloud nine, huh? Jordan helped with, oh, Jordan helped with refueling U.S. aircraft defending Israel against Iran's drone strike. Some was possible. Yeah, Jordan stepped up on the side of Israel. They got quite a you know, close relation, but also Jordan's got the most, you know, I knew several Jordanians uh, and they were all Palestinian refugees, actually. I had a boss that was Jordanian and a Cuban mate that was Jordanian in a company I worked for once upon a time. 
Boy, remember when I was asking you about the diesel? I got it running. Okay. Elton Cowboy. New days. Thank you for sharing my links there for gardening supplies there, guys. And uh, check it out. You better get while well, the getting's good. Transplanted 18 squash today, cloud nine. That's smart. Jack Hodges, a guy in the Russian government right before he retired, said it would be no election. Oh, that was Vladimir Zirakovsky. It was before he died, not before he retired. He's dead. He died right before the uh, invasion into Ukraine. He predicted the day that invasion would occur. He pretty much predicted all this stuff. He was, uh, let me stop the share here for a second. So anyway, guys, this is, we know this place was struck. This is Ishvahan. Stop the share. Come on. My stuff don't want to work right today. So to kind of recap for people that's just joined, uh, Ishvahan has Iran's largest nuclear research complex, the Ishvahan Nuclear Technology Center, the INTC. And once again, it's a multi-purpose research center. It's suspected of potentially being involved in the covert in the covert Iranian nuclear weapons program. We know they have a lot of facilities at this facility, the ones we know of, some of them are, we know they have a small research reactor. We know, so they do have a nuclear reactor. It's not their power reactor, not the one built with Russia. This one was supplied by China. Rodney Middleton, salute to you. Thank you very much. I'm assuming this video will get demonetized like all my newscasts do. So how long ago did Israel fire upon Iran? I've been at the shops. Uh, a little over an hour ago now. And uh, Iran has fired back probably about a half hour ago. Roughly, give or take, you know, 10, 20 minutes. So this is going down. There's not a lot on the news. Uh, it was Saturday last week. Yeah. That was when uh, Iran, on the 14th, that's when Iran, uh, when, uh, Iran struck to Israel on the 14th. Now, Israel struck back today. Somebody says it's the Khomeini's birthday, which that's interesting. I'll have to look Khomeini up. You know, I'll have to do a, another video up soon and talk about what the forces are of each side, you know, kind of an analysis based on that. Um uh, Guys, I'm going to search for some information on him. I'm not going to the Iranian site and pull him up from that way. Give me a second, guys. Give me a minute. Ali Kalamani. Come on, pull him up. Don't do that to me. Oh, yeah. See, here's still the 18th. His birthday is the 19th of April. He was born 19 April, 1939. Well, I bet he appreciates that. I bet he appreciates that. Happy birthday. You got some candles to blow out. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. Let me share this. Sure enough, guys. Because... It's 19th of April over there right now. It's still the 18th of April here, but it's 19th April there. So he, uh, he previously served as the president of Iran. Of course, now he's the supreme leader. The Ayatollah Khomeini replaced Ayatollah Khomeini. A lot of people get them confused because the names are so similar. Well, happy birthday, Ayatollah Khomeini. I say that with tongue in cheek. So, guys, if you're not prepping, what are you doing? You might want to consider going here to uh, prep with Greg. We can get the fifty dollars off a four-week supply of food. But hey, I'm really interested in this deal right now. 
I think this one is a great deal. It's a lot less than what I paid for similar capabilities for my van. I paid about a third more for a unit similar to that that had inferior lithium ion batteries, a Jackery, uh, Jackery uh, 290, I believe it is. And I paid for a solar panel. I mean, combined, I was 750, probably close to $800. Look at this, guys. If you go to the website of Grid Doctor 300, they got it listed for 497. So you can get it cheaper here through my website than you can get it by going to their website. If you are looking for a source for power to hold you over, that's got me trying to order it now. No, I'm just trying to show it to you guys. <laughs> so go to Prep with Greg and you can find that. The dot, uh, I'll spell it backwards M O C. <laughs> So I don't get hit for that. Gosh, this platform is so sensitive. I'm pretty sure they will just cause it. But, you know, other channels can talk about this and be monetized. Other channels can talk about this ad nauseum and be monetized, but they will probably demonetize this video. The video I posted last night, which was nothing like this, which was uh, calm down, uh, trying to urge people to be peaceful. It got demonetized instantly. And I didn't go, what? You gotta be kidding me. Anyway, thank you, New Days. There's a link. Use the link New Days posted. Rodney posted the one for a survival tribe network. Guys, if you're not getting involved, if you don't have a mutual assurance group, don't waste any time. Go there now. Uh, Wise Al paid for that site out of her pocket. She paid dearly to set that website up. And your, your participation is a bit lackluster. But guys, now is the time. Time, The time is almost up. We're at the opera, and the fat lady has just about finished singing. If you're playing musical chairs, I think the music's about to stop. I don't know how long we've got, guys. A lot of asparagus, just enough for me. <laughs> no, not lots. Just enough for you. Enough for you, that's good. The reports, uh, Rand may have already started. Yeah, they have, the Watchmen. They have actually told you that. And I said that in this video. They have actually fired back. Iran has fired back. So, uh, yeah, you must have come in a little bit later. Iran has fired back. Israel's fired and Iran's fired back. Missiles are in the air going both ways. They've already hit in Iran. They probably will be hitting in Israel shortly, if not already. This explosion was heard near the city of Isfahan, according to uh, news agencies' reports. And what I'm telling you guys is that is where Iran's major nuclear research facility is located. Multiple explosions were heard near a military base in Isfahan. Military base. That's probably the nuclear research facility because that is what Netanyahu has been wanting to do for many years. This is what he's wanted to hit for years and years. Well, now it's happened. And like I said, they're, they're, this is also going on in southern Syria, several strikes in southern Syria. This millet, uh, army base as uh, Su Suweta. Is that how you pronounce it? As Suweta, maybe? I don't know. And uh, Dara, Dara governance in southern Syria. Al Jazeera finally picked it up, but they're quoting ABC News of all things. I went to ABC News. And, uh, okay, there's some people been taken out this time by the Israeli war plane. So there are people who are no longer with us already. So this strike has been more eventful in that regard than the one Iran launched on Israel. According to this, Iran activates uh, air defense in several cities. Uh, of course, of Israeli missile attack on site in Iran. I uh, quote ABC News again. Come on. Al Jazeera, I thought you would get something more direct than having to quote ABC News. <laughs> several, nine taken out, several wounded, 15 reported missing in the rubble. Oh, this is in Gaza. So, yeah, like I said, we're hitting Rafa too. So they're hitting Rafa. They're hitting into, uh, uh Syria. Rafa is in Gaza, by the way. They're hitting into Syria. And oil prices are spiking. This is the strike there. 
So let me do a refresh on this and see if there's anything new here under the search terms I put in. Around the nuclear strike, limited strike around nuclear facilities. Israel spec retaliating against Iranian airstrike. So, um, yeah, I see it's not saying the nuclear facilities were hit. And Fox News, when I went to Fox News a little bit ago, Fox News had nothing on this. Absolutely nothing. So now Fox News is caught up. Zero Hedge chimed in. So, again, that was the deception play there. Uh, there'll be no strikes on Iran, just Rafa. Biden get green lighted it. Well, they hit it both. And of course, like I said, the Iranian Iranian president said there'd be nothing left. Israel would be completely destroyed. So I don't know, guys. You tell me. And of course, Netanyahu's ministers were urging him to hit the sensitive facilities. We know what that is. That would be the Isfahan Nuclear. Uh, technology center we talked about a few minutes ago. So I'm going to stop the share again here. So there is going to be news breaking all night long. There will be more and more drops. Is your gas tank full? You got a gas tank station in your area. Before the price spike hits your pump, you might want to get gas. Oil prices just spiked two and a half percent. Uncommon news. Hey, Doug, how you doing? Yeah, I showed the chart. It went from eighty-two uh, dollars a barrel to eighty-five. I just showed that a few minutes ago. Doug, how you doing, buddy? Hey, he, Doug just put up some good videos. Everybody go check out his channel. Uncommon news seven seven seven. He don't get nearly the views he sh should get. Also, Cowboy or Rogers has been putting out a lot of good stuff. So check out their channels and subscribe. Bang the notification bell and click all. We had Rex in the house earlier from the Leak Project. I uh, highly encourage people to subscribe to his channel if you've not done it. You know, he he bring he does a lot of uh, research into things that uh, a lot of folks don't want to talk about. So uh, let's see here. Last president here, Russia, China, maybe. Our fire. Let's play for all the innocent people in these countries. Amen. Definitely on it. Crazy in Alabama. Good move. Recommended. There you go. Yeah, just remember, get ahead of the toilet paper preppers. <laughs> Has Israel done a deal with Iran to save face? Blue fan, that's always going to be part of it. But see, Netanyahu has been chomping at the bit to hit those Iranian nuclear facilities for a long time. Now, so far, no news reporters directly said those facilities were hit. Said they were hitting around them. So why would you hit around them and not hit them? Unless it's a warning shot. But why would they fire a warning shot when you know you're going to get fired back on? Is it a warning shot? Is it just a warning shot? We don't know. We don't know that we can speculate all we want to in the world. Until we get actual news reports, speculation don't serve us. Yeah, it was all kind of speculation out there right now. I'm praying for my purple sweet potatoes. <laughs> all right, Kathleena. Well, let's hope your taters make it. Maybe we should run your taters for uh, the White House. <laughs> Babylon is in Iraq. Yes. Babylon is the Manhattan, New York area, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what a lot of people have been thinking. Just wonder how long my giant potato would would uh, what last you, Kathleen? I don't know. Depends on how fast you eat <laughs> and how big it is. Hard to discern the millennium and the Gog Magog war. You other watchmen, there's a lot of code written in the Bible. I've seen it interpreted 50 dozen different ways. 
And everybody, they got all kinds of justifications why it's exactly this, it's exactly that, it's exactly this. No, this is the answer here. No, absolutely, this is the answer over here. And no, you're totally wrong. It's this over here, and it's that, and it's this, and it's that. Hey, there's something. <laughs> Something's going down, guys. Anyway, thought he said camels. Who, me? <laughs> I hadn't said anything about camels yet. The Tenth Commandments. The Ten Commandments is dumbed down version of the laws of Hamburg. Ham Urabi. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, really and truly, Genesis reads almost like a Reader's Digest convert, condensed version of the uh, some of the Sumerian texts, too. Steve Borg Resistance. How are we all doing tonight? We're wanting to know what's going down. That's how we're doing. Now, a lot of people are going to be frightened. A lot of people are going to be scared. I tell you to be concerned. Keep your eyes wide open, head on the swivel. Right now, Right now, the key thing to remember, right now, this is occurring over there. It's not good for anybody over there. For them, it's horrific. A lot of the people in Iran don't want the Ayatollahs lording over them. They were living pretty much a Western-type lifestyle until the Ayatollahs took over. And a lot of them don't like it. Somebody asked me in the chat, how do you know, Greg, that the Iranians aren't happy? Oh my gosh, my cube, my main study buddy in college was an Iranian. I used to work for an Iranian. My main professor in college, my number one professor was an Iranian. And I, uh, I believe it was just last night, maybe the night before last, I had a, I had a, uh, a co-worker, a Muslim co-worker who was a, actually is a Muslim preacher, calling. We had a good conversation. And he kind of saw things the way I see them. And we were both agreeing that uh, they were all played against each other. And we need to work for peace to stop all this nonsense. We were pretty much in agreement. Baking some popcorn for the big show. Well, it's going to be a big show. Like I said, the President Khomeini has got some birthday candles to blow out now. Martin, I'm going to uh, go look outside. No, it's not coming here yet. It's not coming here yet, not unless Russia or China gets involved. Uh, oh, what happened there? Skipped a bunch. You might need a bicycle if the prices go up there, dead wolf resistance. <laughs> I got some bicycles too. Same thinking. I hope I don't have to ride a bicycle all the way to Arizona. That'd be a bummer. <laughs> Shout out to Rex. Yes, sir. Shout out to Rex. What's up, Arizona Hillbilly? Hey, I'll be heading your way if there's still any fuel to put in my tanks. Oh, Fort Bragg. How you doing, old Fort Bragg? In the house of info and combustion. Oh, Fort Bragg. What's going on around Fort Bragg? Talk to us. Chat disconnected. Please wait while we reconnect you. What? Oh, Lord. Billy the Kid, how you doing? Peace doesn't make money. Not for certain powers of be, not for the military-industrial complex. I mean, peace can lead to a very prosperous economy. It can. But there are those that, you know, want to sell other things. The, the weapons of war are very profitable. Unfortunately. Oh, it will stop. We have... Hope it will, Dead Wolf. Iran has some, but it don't look like it. Some of the smartest mathematicians in the world. I'm going to tell you what. That professor, Reza, uh, uh, what was his name? Reza Adhami. Reza Adhami. He was incredibly brilliant. And my study mate uh, was also incredibly brilliant. Both of them were very, very, very technically off the charts intelligent. Brilliant. Very brilliant. And a lot of people over here want to look at them all and look down at them and think they're nobody. They don't know nothing. And if you, yeah, that's your opinion, you know, like uh, W used to say, never misunderestimate your enemies. Because that's a double negative, which, which actually, if you took the, the uh, mathematical syntax of the statement would be, I could command to underestimate your enemies. But you know what he meant by that. You know, he just, Bush hemmed it up. He knew better. He just did that stuff to ham it up. Um. 
Will cookie cans, paint cans protect stuff from EMP? Okay, if you're using a cookie can or a paint can, uh, whatever device you put in it, you need to put it on a non-conductive block, block of styrofoam, block of wood. You might want to wrap it, and if you can, uh, there are uh, wrappers that come from some electronic parts that kind of help protect against electrostatic discharge. That would be useful to have. If not, that's okay. You might want to wrap it in tin foil and then put it on that block. Put it in the tin can. Make sure it doesn't touch the walls of the tin can. The smart thing about cans, any metal cans, is to line the walls with cardboard. Line the bottom of cardboard. Cardboard is an insulator. Then close that lid tight as you can and put foil over all that. If you can find aluminum tape, I have bought some at Walmart once, uh, maybe Lowe's or Home Depot. I had a big roll over the, over here. I don't know what happened to it. It went poof. Stuff goes poof around here all the time. So get you some uh, aluminum tape and put on the stuff. But the, the best thing to do is make sure you have manual systems. I mean, electronics might do you for a while if we have an EMP. Uh, I got a video. I did a video, guys, on how to survive an EMP. Snow falling in North Dakota. Well, that doesn't surprise me. $250 hammers, uh, hammers and toilet seats were the most profitable for sure, I bet. Especially when there are arms embargoes against certain countries. It's real profitable. Oh, yeah. Was he hamming up mission accomplished? But yes, yes, he did, Luther. Uh, and nothing. He, he said it was entirely wrong. Bush got one thing totally, totally wrong. Back when 9-11 occurred, he said they attacked us because they hate freedom. That wasn't why. We had an embargo on Iraq. And that embargo embargoed medical supplies. The leaders in Iraq were doing fine. Saddam Hussein was eating antelope and going, scurrying around between all those many different mansions. He had some very palatial mansions. He was living high on the hog. The leaders of Iraq were living high on the hog. The people were suffering. And the worst thing that, pe that, that was being complained about, from, I was reading the news sources from the Mideast at the time. What the people there were complaining about the most was that children were succumbing. They were not making it because of lack of medication. Simple medications were unavailable. And the big toll was infants children and the people over there were incensed about it they were complaining about that a very to a very large degree that was their main objection overall from the region now the uh people of uh of uh of uh, oh shit i'm getting brain lock here the people that actually launched the attack uh osama bin laden and his crowd they claim that they did it because American forces were in their holy land because we had forces in Saudi Arabia. And I remember he was from Saudi Arabia, as were most of the attackers. So now there's a lot of questions about how all that proceeded and certain buildings falling in suspicious ways. If I go into that here, my channel will be extinguished immediately. So I'm not going to go into that, but you know, the, the, I think there was two parts. I think they were definitely a part of it. I actually encountered somebody who was actually knew one of those guys when was taking his aircraft uh, training. I was really surprised by the whole thing. <sighs> Tactical Matt, yeah, what, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I think it was more than that. If EMP circuit damage is bad as lightning damage, it really isn't worth trying to fix uh well there's three forms of emp hey cowgirl in arizona how you doing see how can anyone not use profanity uh yeah you know, there's no point in using you're not hearing me using profanity so please don't better get some fairly cases on d sala the cookie tin news is really good that's what i've been doing with fingers crossed plus wrapped items and cloth and aluminum inside static discharge bags. If you got static discharge bags, that'll put you ahead. Now remember, if your devices are built to communicate with a grid, 
Ham radios will probably remain in operation. A lot of your ham people have their stuff protected and they'll be able to talk to each other if they have independent means of power, which some of them do, a lot of them do. So the ham network will continue for a while. Cell networks, I don't know, depends. Your cell phone might survive, but it might not be on a network. A lot of cell phones do have compasses and other useful tools built into them that might be of some use if it's not connected anymore. Uh, some cell towers have backup generators to keep them going for a while if they're not fried by EMP. If just the grid goes down, if they're not fried by EMP. So let's look at what we're looking at here. This is an escalation. It is escalating fast. Right now, the activity is between Israel, is in the areas of Israel, Syria, Iran. The uh, Houthis are probably will be launching missiles. Uh, uh, you will have you know, the entire Middle East in that area is the immediate parties involved. Jordan and Saudi Arabia, along with Great Britain and potentially France were involved in taking down missiles being fired at Israel. As I showed you previously last night on Soil Ahead News, uh, it, it, the American forces were and other forces were attributed to taking down fully half of uh, the missiles and drones launched to Israel. And that included our SM-3, Standard Missile 3, fired from our naval assets. That is uh, part of the Aegis system. Now, the Aegis system is not just Aegis destroyers. There's also a system called Aegis Ashore for missile defense at home, which we should have had. Uh, my uh, person I had on this channel back uh, a few years ago, Ambassador Cooper, was a big, big advocate of putting Aegis Ashore on the Gulf Shores of the United States so we wouldn't have missiles coming over the South Pole at us or from Venezuela which Stacey Zavicki foresaw in a dream. Is that going to be happening sometime soon? We don't know. Doing good. Just watch Paul Begley's weekly update. It's getting heated. It is heated, and it's going to get hotter. Uh, bean, uh, beer, beans, and bullets. That's the good username. I finally made another live stream. Well, good for you. <laughs> so uh, going to bed? All right, Chew Weather. Good to see you in here. I will likely be coming on again later tonight. Building one, building two, and the way over. Oh, yeah. Tactical, I can't really talk that. Building seven was a really weird one. And there was an I beam sticking up in the air. I saw on video. Big, tall, big chunk of steel. And the photographs of it showed it standing and then showed it turning to vapor after everything was gone. How did that happen? I don't know. Strange stuff. I got my suspicions, but I'm not going to lay them out here. Uh, I've been wondering how long the pulse of the nuclear EMP. Okay. EMP. EMP takes three forms. You got an e, uh, E1 waveform, an E2 waveform, and an E3. E1 is the real fast, high-frequency waveform. That's the one that will couple into smaller devices. They still need leads of a certain length to pick it up. Whether it would hit your phone or not is highly questionable. It's probably not. Smaller devices aren't so likely to get it. That's why you may not have to worry about your pacemakers. Uh, Lithium-ion batteries, if they get an overcurrent on them, could go into thermal runaway. But they got to see that current. If Without long enough leads, they might not. If they're plugged in, they might. If you got a lithium-ion battery plugged in and that hits, it's liable to explode. Um, so you got to bear what's what happened in your house. Just think the Keratin event took out te telegraph stations. You had fires in telegraph stations. The Keratin event was the E3 waveform. E2 waveform is kind of like lightning, except it's positive charge. It's like big super lightning. The E3 waveform is like the Keratin event. It's picked up by long conductors. It's a low frequency. The high current, it will uh, it will uh, be picked up by rail lines, pipelines, telephone lines, uh, and your uh, power lines. So all pick up the E3. That could come in your house. What well, a lot of these so-called devices are set up to do is protect you from a part of the E1. 
and they won't entirely protect because I've showed the military spec earlier when it, all the things it calls for are way beyond what a little chintzy device is going to give you. Uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot more stuff popping. I assume by now missiles are probably landing in Israel by now. All uh, from Northeast Arizona. Hey, Jesse, how you doing? Uh, we got 316 in the room. So uh, if the grid goes entirely down, you know, if you don't have a means of recharging your batteries, your device, the utility of your devices are in question. If your means of recharging your batteries is gas you get the gas station, uh, that's not going to last long. Any fuel source you got to buy from somewhere else, kiss it goodbye. Yeah, you, your car might survive, but you may not have no gas to drive it. Same goes if they hit our substations with kinetic energy, I mean, kinetic attacks. I mean, they, they just go in and attack them. Like happened in this, uh, at the Metcalf station in San Jose on April 16th, 2013. On that day, that substation was hit. That was the day that the North Korean satellite first flew over Washington, D.C., and at that time, the North Koreans had a uh, Chong Chong Gang was the name of the stamp streamer, uh, tramp steamer. They had steaming around in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico with uh, missiles on their launchers, mounted on their launchers in an ISO shipping container. What were they practicing back 11 years ago? 11 years ago. Same here, X-Dragon. I miss all you guys, too. The grid goes down. We well, won't be here anymore. You better be watching my garden videos right now. <laughs> Go watch my garden videos, my videos on wild edibles. Watch my video on uh, how to purify and sanitize water. Watch my MP survival video. Watch my bug out videos. It's time to go look at, watch my nuclear survival videos. There's going to be no more content in anyone else's videos. It goes in great detail explaining radiation, the different forms of it, how to protect from it, and even how you can dig a bunker out in the woods. You don't have to be rich to have a bunker. So, and you make us not cuss. <laughs> Yeah, let's not let's not be cussing here. It doesn't really buy us anything. What's your opinion on EMP devices for vehicles? Well, your vehicle may not need it in the first place. Because whether the vehicle be hit or not is highly questionable. It's going to be kind of hit and miss. Anything for 1986 would probably be pretty robust. You might, your spark plug wires might get burned up. Uh, thank you, Cowgirl. Yes, check out True Leaf Market. Faraday Fabrics, yeah. You can get Faraday Fabrics if you go to uh, I'm saying the site. It's uh, go to uh, uh, oh shoot, I'm getting brain locked here. Go to uh, Arthur Bradley's YouTube channel. Arthur Bradley. I used to work on these things called Allen Bradley devices and in industrial control center. So I have to always get the word Allen Bradley out of my mind to say Arthur Bradley. That's always my problem. I worked on Alan Bradley so much back there for a couple of years in industrial control systems. Uh, Arthur Bradley is PhD, electrical engineering, works uh, at a NASA center, uh, the one, one of them over in the uh, Washington, D.C. area. Uh, well, it's not Wallops, it's uh, not Goddard. I don't think it's Goddard. It's one of the other NASA centers up there. I'm getting brain locked on that. But he, he's got a YouTube channel. And you'll find links on this channel to his website that carries uh, EMP fabrics. I got one here somewhere. Of course, Rex sent me this cap. <laughs> Does a ten full cap. You can wrap it around a phone, and I've got a pouch for you to put your phone in somewhere. Buried over here. Ah, uh, here we go. That'll actually work. Put my phone in. Cuts off the RF. Um, best thing you can do is make sure you got a bunch of manual tools. Manual, hand powered. You have a hand powered auger, brace and bit. The brace and the bit's the drill piece, right? I don't know why those called brace and bit. <laughs> it's a brace unless you have a bit put in it, right? I don't think braces always come with bits. 
<laughs> but it was called a bracing bit. Anyway, EVs will explode in high MP. They might. They might do it. They just might. So, uh, <clears throat> my pomegranate tree is lopsided, but doing great. Oh, that's good to hear. Pomegranates are real healthy for you. Ten full cap. <laughs> May rust. <laughs> it might. It might. Where's mine at? What am I doing? Here we go. Time for the tenfold cap. Now, everybody's talking about tenfold caps. Here we go. I do have an official tenfold cap. The Marty McFly edition, which comes from tenfoldcap.co. <laughs> and this was given to me as a gift from none other than Rex Bear, the Leak Project. <laughs> Ain't it pretty? I don't think it'll really protect me none because it's getting too wide open everywhere, but you know. <laughs> And I'm not worried about EMPs hitting my head. I'm not worried about 5G. It's not going to penetrate anyway. But it's a beautiful hat. <laughs> Does look futuristic. Because it's like the one that Marty McFly was wearing in the movie, the second version of Back to the Future. Except it didn't have the white on it or the timepiece, which is supposed to be for Marty McFly. So this is the Marty McFly vision of the 10 full cap. Funny that uh, Rex would give me this after I got him into the Mount Hollywood tunnels explaining to him that piece from that movie. And this is a hat he had to give me all along. We had no idea what was going there. Talk about weird synchronicities or the video that shows me shouting light when I said halo. Well, if you don't believe it, go to Galactic Griff's channel and just find the voice from light anomaly. And you can find my video up on my camera. And then you can find a link to Rex's video up because Rex had better cameras and video effects. So you'll want to watch Rex's video on that. That cat will save, save your brain from micro Nova. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We're just having fun a little bit there, Kathleen. We're not taking it seriously on that regard. Living in the left field, so hip. Don't wear an electrical storm. <laughs> I wear it for fun, just for fun. It is a fun cap. It is definitely sharp. It is very... uh. Very hip. I had some little bitty blue glasses that are fun to wear with. I don't know where I put them. Little tiny little blue glasses. Anyway, oh, so much for that. Could put on my rose colored glasses. Find them. They're here close by somewhere. I thought I knew where they were at. That's not them. Anyway, guys, so um, bear in mind, here they are. Guys, I'm set. How about you? <laughs> this isn't what's got me set, though. It ain't this. It's the preps. I'm set as I can be. You know, hey, Arizona. Cool cowgirl. Y'all like that, huh? <laughs> I should always wear this in all my videos, right? <laughs> it would freak people out. It would freak people out. I probably do anyway with my long hair and and the Space Force pin on my hat. A Space Force. Somebody, hey, you got to deal with Fine, I don't know. What kind of idiots come up with stuff like that? Jeez, I got such weird crap people put leaving comments. They're unacceptable living. Well, hey, thank you. Salute to you. Appreciate the super chat. Been a long time. Hope you were well and have a great year. Well, I'll have a great year if I can get out of Alabama here in a month or so and get my rear end to Arizona. That's what I'm trying to do. Who knows with all the stuff going down. So. The old man of the mountain. There you go. So to recap, Israel struck it around. They hit all around their main nuclear research facilities are located in Ifsrahan. And they probably struck them because that's what Netanyahu's been wanting to do for a long time. I don't see a confirmation of that yet. Iran launched back. Iran has warned that they would obliterate Israel if Israel struck them. Uh, we don't know what level of counter-strike they've launched so far. We do know they did launch some missiles back because they did say they'd strike immediately. Uh, if they were ready to launch everything, don't know yet. They're probably doing their own damage assessments. Also, Syria got struck. Uh, there will be a lot more news coming out. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, uh, the Super Chest is probably all I'm going to earn out of this video because of these kind of videos get tend to get demonetized 100 percent 
Uh, so I appreciate the super chat very much. Fraser family, where in the are you in Queensland? Okay, Rodney. So Rodney is in that area. So we have Australia in the house. We have Canada in the house. We have the United States in the house. And we may have some folks from other countries. So uh, this is serious. It's es it is escalating. There is nothing you can see out there to de-escalate it. And what was put out there making it look like a de-escalation was probably just a ploy. I showed you guys the article a little bit earlier in this video. You can catch it on the rewind. You can see the video I did last night on Swivel Ahead News, where it was suddenly acclaimed that there was a deal between uh, the administration and the Israeli government that Israel would get the green light to hit Rafa and some money from D.C. if they would not strike Iran. Well, they struck Rafa today. They struck Syria, and they struck Iran. And all the yams last night really suggest the United States was in on it. So all that stuff was probably just a deceptive ploy. I said last night that it might be a deceptive ploy, and we see this. Hey, Nightman's wife, how you doing from Trenton, Florida? Baxter's in Canada. Okay, Baxter Churchill. Fort White, Florida. Extra. Okay, everybody, tell us where you're from while we're at because it's about time to go. Cha-Cha is a mod on Duramax. Good for her. A stray kitten come in the house. Not haven't seen her. Albert Borgman, three R A R star. Welcome to the league. I don't know what that is. Three R A R. Uh, Rodney, salute to you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So Rodney, Rodney, and unacceptable living have been the super chatters for tonight. I should check my. Uh, uh, I'll check this to see if anything else is going. Stray Kitten, there you are. Yeah, you're mod on this channel, Stray Kitten. Uh, when I go back to Soil Ahead News, I'm going to make you a mod there, too. Glad to see you. Bill, off-grid Arizona. That's what I want to try to be, off-grid in Arizona myself. Uh, just got caught up. Okay. I'm going to check my PayPal, see if anybody sent anything there. Don't want to miss Given recognition to anyone? All right, not yet. So there will be more news. I do have to get up early in the morning. I've not ate dinner yet. I fasted yesterday. I'm going to fast tomorrow, so I'm going to eat dinner. I've got off grid power. Dave Potter, you're ahead. I'm like, okay, I did make you mod. Okay, good. That was the plan. So what is your not mod? Was it Galactic Gregs? Anyway, I'll make sure wherever you show up, you're a mod. <laughs> Says I see you there. All right. So um, yeah, Cha Cha lost her home a while back. So guys, we have been on here for 77 minutes, and I've just been repeating the same stuff. We got to see what the latest news cycle is on this stuff. And a lot of stuff, stuff will be coming out all day today and for days to come, just on what just happened. But I'm expecting it's going to accelerate. More stuff will be happening. Tip for tat has begun. Uh, so we'll have to go into some more analysis on this soon. I'll just lay out what each side has in their force array, at least from Israel and Iran. Of course, Israel is backed up by China and Russia to some degree. And, uh, and some other, you know, they got all their proxy groups, the Hezbollah, the Houthis. Iran's got a lot of support. Uh, Israel's got support from Jordan, somewhat conditionally from Saudi Arabia, the United States mainly, United Kingdom, and uh, perhaps France. All these countries are involved. This is global. This is World War. World War is happening. They got war in Ukraine. Several countries involved in that. It's the same set of characters on each side, pretty much. Next, we got to wonder, is little Kim over in North Korea going to take advantage and make a move? Will Xi Jinping make a move on Taiwan? I don't know. If they do, that's why I said in that video I posted earlier today, then you could expect uh, that the United States might be tempted to at least partially close at least the Chinese traffic through the Strait of Hormuz. Now, whether they do it there at the Strait, whether they do it back at the Malacca, Strait of Malacca, over in Indonesia, time will tell. 
We don't know yet, guys. If we lose our Navy assets somewhere because China might be able to pull off what they claim, you'd expect it to straight over moves. Um, in any case, this is not good for the price of oil. The price of oil has already shot up. Pump prices will be up soon if they're not already up. If you've not filled your tank up, go do it. Keep it full. If the grid goes down, you got nothing. If we, if the United States gets directly involved in hitting Iran, or if they think we are, and if they think the regime is at risk of existence, if they see this as an existential threat, then they have the Iranian Revolutionary Guard claimed way back in 2013, interesting that year, he claimed back then when he was told that, oh, the, the uh, National Electric Reliability Corporation put out a report. I've shown that report on this channel before. Saying that nine key, that if there was nine certain key substations that taken out, our whole grid would go down. His response, when the guy went to him all excited about that, was that, uh, I've already got 20 targeting with sleeper cells in the United States. Okay, that was 11 years ago. We hadn't had anybody crossing the border since then, have we? So, oh, it's galactic. We'll take care of our own galactic Gregs next time I'm live there. We'll take care of it. So, straight kid, next time I go live on galactic Gregs, pop in and we will mod you. We will not you a Smurf. So, uh, Bill, we don't have any money or weapons left. We get, uh, Yeah, we've been giving it away in Ukraine. This is why China might decide now is the time to move. They got a, we got a president in the White House who doesn't seem to be a paragon of strength. And he's been a little bit friendly to China. We've got uh, just a lot of stuff, yes. I mean, we haven't got all our forces in place yet to protect Guam and the Philippines from such attacks. We're having a military exercise that's supposed to start, I think, today, the 19th of April. Interesting. With the Philippines, 16,000 troops, over 16,000 troops. U.S. and the Philippines joint military exercise is supposed to last into, I think, the 10th of May. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, uh, Steadfast Defender is still going on in Europe, and it's supposed to go on in about mid-May. No, hello, I'm not ignorant about galactic stuff. <laughs> we know you've been in there. So we'll look forward to seeing you there next time I go live over there. Hot pocket. We fly soon. Hmm. Arnold, uh, that's when Greg goes outside and walks in the woods. He feels the wind, smells the fragrance, and listens to nature. I do that pretty often. Uh let me show you some pictures on my cell phone here. I actually posted some on my Facebook site. Maybe I'll pull them up later tonight. I don't know. I got to get up early morning. I can't be up too late tonight, guys. We can't be too late. So I'm not going to do a smorgasbord of articles tonight. I'll just do one germane to this topic. It's going to have to be right on topic, just like I did for this video. Whatever the latest news is. By the time we come back on, there's going to be a lot more news out there in the news cycle. Uh, we'll see a lot more stuff. Uh Let's see here. All right, let's see if y'all can see this picture. I don't know if y'all be able to see it or not. There I am, out in the woods. And here I am looking over a bluff. Uh, focus. No, you know what? I'll show these tonight, maybe later. If I'm just not, I don't know. Sometime in the near future, I'll I'll go through these pictures with you guys. I'm not showing them too good from the phone, so I'll just pull them up one night and show them to you guys. 
Yeah. Nice pictures, Cat. Yeah, that was a nice little hike I had. Uh, not before last, I think. Yeah, not before last. I believe it was. It was the last night. My time is all melding together. My it's not before last. I believe Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Tuesday evening. Kill Mount. Anyway. All right, folks. I saw you suggest nature bath and comments, but I didn't know what that was. Oh, uh, it does you a lot of good to spend some time in nature. It's good for the soul. It's good for the body. It's, it has a very positive physiological effect on people and mental effects both. Uh, there's a lot of articles written about it. I've shared some of those way back in the past. So I highly encourage people to spend as much time in nature as they can. So... Guys, war's on. Sorry, I'll try this again with the right account. Hey, everybody. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? Nice to see you here. Love's beautiful 1910. Hey, Greg, I'll be your free housekeeper and cook in Arizona. Wow, that sounds great. Love is beautiful, 1910. <laughs> well, go to my website and find my email there. You can always email me and I'll look you up. What part of Arizona are you in? Love is beautiful. Uh, every day. So, guys, once again, right now the conflict is getting really intense in the Middle East. Iran and Israel are exchanging missiles as we speak, and it's quite possible the Iranian nuclear facility has been hit. There could be radiation spewing out, so it will be catastrophic there in that area. If that's the case, I said if. Just remember, I said if. Don't say, Greg said this. You take a natural bath with your clothes on. <laughs> well, when I'm in woods where people might see, yes. <laughs> if somebody might walk up on me, the answer is yes. But when I was a kid, and I was often in woods running, nobody would see me. <laughs> and there was nice little pools to go skinny dipping in. So, yeah, been there, done that. So, yeah. You just got to watch the skeeters. The sun on the skin is very healthy for you if you don't get sunburned. So, uh, Melinda, Melinda, say Melinda, blessings. Yes, thank you, Melinda. All righty, folks. Oh, you're in Alabama. Okay, Lois, you're in Alabama. Okay. We're in Alabama. Well, shoot me an email. Lord Dragon, hey, salute you. Thank you, Lord Dragon the Red. Salute you. Thank you for the super chat. I already love is beautiful. I tell you what, if you go to my website, dot turn this around like the word nug, M O C, you'll find my contact and phone number. I seldom say that thing ring. Try the and the ring resolve. Just email me. All righty, folks. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. Michelle's always part of the family, whether she's here or not. Aniston, okay. My older brother used to work in Aniston. Aniston Army Depot. I know where Aniston is. Mount Chihaw. That's another pretty mountain to go up. Mount Chihaw, the tallest mountain in Alabama, is near Aniston. Mount Chihaw. I actually did some video driving through the area. I believe I did a live video through there once. I like skinny dipping, so guess what? <laughs> oh, you so like it. There you go, Kathleen. Nothing wrong with that. It's just another way to enjoy nature. Man, the forest must be amazing in your area. Well, right here where I'm at at the moment. I got some woods back here, but I would not go skinny uh, anything back there. <laughs> Close on. Uh, we're working on more. It's lobe connection. That was lobe. Uh, Love, there you go. Gotcha. I'm in sacks. Okay. Very good. Love is beautiful. Well, shoot me an email. I uh, never heard of this mountain. Well, in northeast Alabama, we got Kill Mountain. And Aniston, what we was talking about, Mount Chihaw. It's the tallest mountain in Alabama. It's like 2,400 feet, something like that, 2,400 feet. I remember when I was in Alaska climbing what I thought was a little hill. We call it Donnelly's Dome. And I look at all the big mountains around me, like 14,000 foot peaks, like Mount Hayes, Mount Deborah. 
And there, the mountains don't start at sea level, don't start at a mile high like they did in Colorado. No, that's closer to sea level than you go to 14,000 feet. Those mountains are mountains. They got a huge summit because the climate there, the summit is much bigger. The tree line is very low. So it's big peaks, big peaks, almost all peak. <laughs> but anyway, I, I later looked on the map and discovered that uh, Donnelly's Dome, that little hill I climbed, was 4,000 feet high. And I just basically ran up the, the steep side of it. I had some other guys with me. I left them way behind. I used to could run and do all kinds of stuff. I could, when I'd be running, you know, the, the PT test, I'd outrun everybody. Man, I used to be a crazy runner, but I tore my I tore my joints up doing that. I, you know, it wasn't that long ago, 20 years ago, I was running 12 miles every other day. I'm paying for it now. <laughs> I barely walk sometimes. I'm paying dearly for that. Uh, Arizona's nice, especially White Plains. Good people there. Yep, White Mountain area of Arizona. I practically need, let's see, I need a practical gardening shop, workshop, shop in Rimi and sunny Mississippi, South Mississippi. You can always make you a Florida room there to grow stuff in a, in a colder weather. Uh, New Days does that up in Maine. She gets her garden started earlier in her little Florida room. Her whole house is basically a Florida room. And she grows a lot of stuff. It's funny, the only time I was in Alabama, I was skinny dipping. Oh, that is funny. <laughs> that is funny. Well, Linda Lima, I need some. Oh, yeah, I already read that. All right, guys. Gardening. Take your gardening seriously. Check out my True Leaf Connection. Go to uh, Prep with Greg to look at the solar powered generator there, too. I only call that one a generator because it actually has a panel with it. <laughs> That's a, the panel is the generator. That other stuff is the power storage and distribution center. And, you know, that's what that bot says. It's not the generator. Uh, uh, I meant I need a roommate. Okay, Melinda. You need, a, you need a roomie in South Mississippi. All right, folks. There's a lady who needs a roomie in South Mississippi, guys. <laughs> All righty. So, uh, Girls, maybe I don't know what you're looking for. You might just want a companion, somebody to help you garden. I don't know what you're what you're hunting there. Uh, I shouldn't be supposing these things. Civil defense caves in Idaho. Yeah, if you're in Idaho, you might want it in case you're getting blowback. If we get nuclear strikes on our strategic forces and Monon Air Force Base, Malstrom Air Force Base, all that stuff, and the Dakotas, which is too close to you in uh, eastern Montana. All righty, folks, we need to go. It's 1123, and uh, I will probably be back on here for a little bit. Lord Dragon, salute you again. Thank you, sir. Greg spends a lot of time to keep us informed. It does take a lot of time to bring you guys this stuff. It takes a lot of time. I can't believe how many hours a day I spend doing news research. Will I do a video or not? Sometimes I just get to the end, and I ain't got time to do a video. I say ain't because I'm a Southerner. <laughs> it's in our dictionary down here, by the way. It's in the Redneck Dictionary. Ain't is a principal word in our language. <laughs> it's up there with y'all. <laughs> I hear people all over the country saying y'all now. We metastatize our language, <laughs> which is entirely hilarious, right? So, uh, let's shoot. Check something out. With not yet. Okay, not yet. All right. Let me check something real fast for you. Got a donation, Michelle Young. I think that was in this morning, though, right, Michelle? I bet it was this morning on Soul Ahead. Yep. All right. That was this morning. All right, folks. Uh, Rodney is very generous. He is. Rodney is a very generous guy. I appreciate him a lot. He sent me some knives that he built himself. Took a lot of time and effort with those. Beautiful handiworks. Um, I'll show one right here in a minute.
come in beautiful leather cases. Made of some very serious steel. He is quite the craftsman. Knife smith. All right, folks. All righty, folks. Just uh, eyes wide open and head on a swivel like never before. Here's another thing. With all these sleeper cells, who knows who'd get activated when. Uh, some of them have targeted our grid. Some may target our water systems, sewer systems, dams, any kind of infrastructure, or they may just target crowds. Let's hope they don't get activated anytime soon. Yeah, Ronnie's awesome with what he makes. He is just second to none. Awesome knife smith. Nice knife. The rhymes done it. Or alliterates so much. Nice knife. Anyway, the shell's very generous. Indeed. Lord Dragon's very generous. And we've had some good generosity tonight from Unacceptable Living. Of course, Rodney. And so what I want to say is it's really time to close for now. Expect me to come back on. Uh, we should be back here on Soilhead News. I just need a little time. I can't go too late on Soilhead News. I got to get real early tomorrow morning. Got a guy that's going to be at 7 to buy my walk-in cooler. And I usually when I finish, I didn't go to bed almost 7 this morning. So I can't go real late on uh, uh, Soil Ahead News, but I will get the updates on the news and bring them to you then. So, uh, yeah, Rodney, Rod, Rodney's a nice guy. We got a lot of, guys, we're family. We got a lot of nice members in the chat here. I appreciate all you already do. Let's hope that we can continue this. Let's hope the grid don't go down anytime soon. I hope not. Hey, Mary, how you doing? I wonder how EMP would would the old school sim. I don't know, Mary. The old school sim. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Norway's in the house. All righty, Norway. Yeah, I, what's a walk-in cooler? It's a great big cooler that you can walk into. It's like a room. I bought it for vegetables and things like that for selling for to the farmer's market. It's right up back out my house. And I got a guy want to come buy it tomorrow. And I got everything here for sale. I'm selling everything. I'm trying to get out to Arizona. Well, do your bug out living video. Oh, yeah. I'm planning to do a video on that. We've been kind of overcome by events. So that'll be coming. Just give me, I did the one on the uh, straight home release first because I thought that was tactically important. I'll try, you know, if the good Lord's willing and we still got an internet and power grid. Uh, it'll be coming in the next few days. Uh, we got a lot of stuff. Yeah, war drums are pounding hard, the news, man. You got that right. So that's where we're going tonight. So we'll head news. New Days just posted there. Thank you, New Days. It's Norway. Yeah. So stay tuned. I will be back tonight. Hopefully not as late as usual. I will be back on So we'll head news. It might be within an hour. No later than two more hours from now. Anywhere between an hour and two. So just bear in mind, guys, we are at risk. I don't think we're at risk personally right here today, but it could be. We don't know how fast this is going to escalate. I hope it's a slow escalation, but over there in the Middle East, the escalation is not slow. It is not slow. If they actually hit the uh, nuclear research facility there in Iran, if they actually hit the uh, Isfahan Nuclear Technology Center. We do know that Israel uh, struck all around it, at least. That's what's been reported. I imagine they would actually strike it if they could. I need lots of coffee, Rodney. That's probably true. Oh, you're Fraser. Okay. There's some Frasers live back not too far from me here. That Isfahan Nuclear Technology Center is believed to be the main, it's the largest nuclear research facility in Iran. It's believed to be the center of their nuclear weapons development program. It's got a small reactor supplied by China. It's got a uranium. Wow, unacceptable living. 
Fill up with the move. That's a long drive. Thank you. I've been worried about gas money to get out there. That's a start toward that. Appreciate it, unacceptable living. That's awesome. Woohoo. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very much, unacceptable living. That's a beautiful, generous super chat. All righty, guys. So bear in mind that they're, uh, they got the uh, uranium conversion facility there. They produce zirconium and uh, fuel plate fabrication. Some of that's for their nuclear plants. Is uh, Israel striking their nuclear plants? Apparently, they haven't done it yet. At least it's not been reported. But this can escalate. Well, uh, the question is, will Iran strike at uh, Israel's Shimon Peres Negev Nuclear Research Center, which most of you know is the Dimona reactor? Iran has struck back. Missiles have been impacted on both sides. Missile defense systems are active. Uh, the fog of war is very much a fog right now, but hopefully and within an hour we can sort this out. So in an hour or two, I will be back on Swivel Head News. Yes, sir. So uh, with that, I am going to say thank you, Super Chatters. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Because right now you're supporting me. <laughs> and it's mighty thin. Uh, uh, but anyway, guys, so yeah, I'm not getting diddle off of uh, ad revenue off these channels. Uh, YouTube has been stomping me. So I really appreciate you guys. I want to uh, thank all the mods. You've been busy tonight. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you posting all these links for me. And I want to thank everybody just for being here. I want to thank all of you for watching, for being here, being part of the family. Share my videos far and wide as much as you can because this platform don't do a lot in that regard. And keep your eyes wide open and head on a swivel. Don't panic. Don't be scared. Get prepared. But there's no time to waste. No more time to waste. No more time for procrastination. Procrastination time is over. It is time to act. Okay, folks. With that, I'm going to say see y'all on Swivelhead News. I'm not going to say good night. See y'all on Swivelhead News within a couple of hours, maybe sooner if I can pull